So yeah, basically a clean out is just an access port to the uh, to the drain system. Uh, usually, they're only used in emergencies. And obviously, if the drain lines clog or some issues with the drain system, uh, it's an access port where um, you know usually right, not right next to a floor drain because you have an access port there, but somewhere along the middle of the line or the run. Um, it just allows quick access to fix the problem and get access to the piping to try and uh, eliminate the issue. Um, my fabs clean outs, uh, they're all designed to have quick and easy access to the piping uh, without any special tools. And what that allows it to do is you know, get the job done quicker, and then all of our cleanouts are designed to be resealed without any type of special tools or components. So once the job's done, it can be sealed back up, and um, you know, don't even know that anyone was there. Uh, so the picture there, the first page, and that's just a general cleanout. Um, you know, just a teed off section. Your main drain line is running horizontally and this T section just gives you the access point to it. Um, if you go back to chapter one, page one dash four, we looked at our nice suburbia house with our bathroom, our kitchen, no bedrooms, basement, no walls, open floor concept. Um, there's clean outs in this drain system. Uh, I believe there's six of them. Rich, you see one there? Yeah. I think underneath the kitchen sink. Okay. Yeah, right there where the pipe makes a 90 degree turn, you see how it stems out and there's a clean out right there. So that would allow them to get access to that long run of piping that's going underneath the bathroom and then runs down. Um, Greg, you see another one? There's one by laundry and there's one by the front of the house. Yeah, the front of the house. That's usually your main sewer clean out. Um, that's so you could, you know, if they ever have to route out from the building to the city drain lines. Um, Steve, you see another one? Uh, did we get the one right by where it says sewer clean out where the pipe goes up to the second floor? The vertical one? Right. Yeah. That's the right there. You know, everyone sees it. So usually you'll see one like at, towards the bottom of a vertical line because you got waste falling going into a horizontal pipe. So a lot of times, you know, if you're going to get a blockage because you got that transfer and flow, it can happen there. So a lot of times they're always put on a vertical line. Okay, there's an inline one in the laundry section on the vertical pipe, right in between the sink and the laundry. Uh, so that's like a smaller version of the one we just talked about that was kind of on that main line. <coughs> and then there's another one they show underneath the building for that long horizontal run that's at the left end of that run. So there's a lot of different places, you know, where they could go. Uh, in our book, they have on page 155 the suggested clean out specifications. I listed all those in section A. So we could go through those just to get an idea. And what you'll see is a lot of the notes it says here kind of relate to where they were in that image we were just looking at. Um, first off, with anything, uh, you know, all local codes and guidelines should be followed. Uh, there could be certain regions that have different, you know, um, jurisdictions, you know, where they want them and stuff like that. Um, but cleanouts. Connection should be the same size as the drain pipe up to four inch diameter. So if you have a two inch drain pipe, you can normally use a two inch clean out. Three inch, you know, up to four inch, you can use the same size. Um, the, for so pipes that have larger diameter than four, uh, most jurisdictions just say it needs to be a four inch connection. Um, when we start looking at the design of our clean outs uh, components, you'll see that 
they're all designed for at least a four or four inch um, access, horse diameter access. Uh, vertical clean out should be installed as near as possible to the interface of the wall through which the drain passes. Um, so if you go back to almost the house, um, and even if you look in the bathrooms, you'll see the chrome cover. There's a clean out behind that. So what they're saying is it's best to have that clean out as close to the wall. So if you do have to access it, if it's a deep wall, you're not going really far into the wall. You're trying to get that clean out as close to the inside of the wall. If it's not protruding, some instances you'll see where you could actually just, they're not even cover. You can see the clean outs right there. Uh, I know when we were across the street, that's how a lot of their bathrooms were for the uh, Salvation Army. When you walked in, the drywall is already put up and you just see a chrome, you know, plug that's clean out right into the, goes right into the drain pipe. Um, a clean out should be installed where a trap is located in the building. So if there's some type of underground trap, uh, the trap stops sewer gas smell from coming up through the, the drains. Um, it's a good practice to have a clean out there because of the transfer and the flow of water in the drain. There's a good chance that that could clog. Um, so it's always good to have an access point there. Um, one should be installed at the foot of each vertical sanitary storm rack. Um, that's pretty much what we're looking at here with the vertical drain pipes. To have a clean out access port because of that change in flow. The vertical's coming down and it's running into a horizontal pipe. So uh, especially with storm racks, that's more uh, talking about roof drain applications and the roof drain system. Uh, you, know, you get a lot of leaves and anything like that to build up and clog the line. So that's a kind of right place for uh, a clog to happen. Uh, the next one, at the end of drain lines, like we looked at the house, there was the two ends, the upstairs and the downstairs, and they both had clean outs there. So you're able to get access to that whole horizontal run by just opening up those two uh, clean outs. Um, where a drain line change has a change in direction of 45 degrees or more. So a lot of what we we're saying with the vertical one, because it changes, you know, got almost a 90 degree turn or change, um, where the water has an abrupt change in direction or change in flow, it's good to have a clean up there because that's a, a real good chance that the breed can get caught at that uh, point. Um, the next one, just give some general guidelines of where they should be located on horizontal drain lines. Um, up to four inch, it's recommended that they have a clean out uh, no more than uh, every 50 feet for access to that drain line and no more than 100 feet on four inch and larger uh, horizontal lines. Now there's local codes and guidelines that might say something different. This is just a general uh, rule for clean out locations. Um, so page 156 starts um, our products and from 156 all the way to 151 basically one top of 161 they're all the same principle just with different types of tops. Um, so to see uh, 1000 C1100 series you all use the A1 body. Um, so this is kind of going back to the modular design where you know the same body could be a floor drain, an area drain, a roof drain, and a clean out. So it all starts with the same base. Um, all the clean outs we have, whether whatever type of style top it is, they have a four inch opening. So this goes back to what we said. If it's a larger than a four inch drain pipe, this will still work because you normally only need a four inch opening. It's just an access port to get to the drain line. Um, two inch and three inch, you'd have a smaller connection, but you still have a four inch opening that threads into the top. Um, all of the clean out tops come with the neoprene uh, gasket. We'll talk about this. Um, so what happens with this is this goes into the body and it's another um, gas stopper. Um, 
all of our standard units, top assembly cleanouts. They just usually have like a standard R-1, R-3, three screws to remove it. Then you have the neoprene seal. This is another seal that stops you know, gas fumes from coming up through the floor. Uh, with these, uh, it it's, explains it in the book, page 154. Uh, the gasket, it creates a seal, but it also, once the drain is accessed, someone would be able to determine if this gasket is on there because if it was removed and the lit cover was reinstalled, the cover would sit lower inside the frame so you could determine that the gasket's not there. So just a quick little inspection that they could check. Um, uh, all the cleanouts that are designed to finish flush with the floor, uh, so R-1, R-3, or R-3, R-1, um, they all have the serrated tops um, because with the drains, you got the slots, which gives you corruption, less chance of sliding on it. So all the clean-out covers come with serrated tops that minimize any chance of slipping on them or um, you know, them becoming slick. So the secondary seal, uh, this is the CO2 gasket. And what this does, this goes inside the A1 body. All the A1 bodies inside, underneath the threads, there's a recess in there, and then there's a little, you can feel like a little recess. So that this O-ring goes inside the body. Inside that groove, so it goes up against the threads on the A1 body. So you, they install it like that. And then what that, does is that'll seal the threads. So you just take your, your threaded top, thread it down, and what it does is those threads start engaging with the gasket, and that creates a seal. Um, so even if we seal the inside with our gasket and the top, there's still a chance you could get gas fumes to leak through the side and come up you know, around the outside edge of the clean-out. So that eliminates that from happening. Um, so these are the CO-2s. Uh, we do have these part numbers on their own if anyone needs replacements or they get lost. Uh, they're in the back of the book under the part section. Uh, the illustration there you can see a little better on page 9-3 uh, uh, where the O-ring goes and how when the threads when the top assembly is threaded into it, it engages with it and creates a seal. Um, so this stays the same. You know, you got your, your O-ring in the body, your A1 body, and then you just have the different types of toppers. Um, so starting on page 156, you go through, does anyone have questions on this or does this make sense? No problems you ever heard or any issues with it. Um, so now we'll look at the tops. All of these have A1 bodies, and then you just have the different style tops. Um, so the R-1 and R-3s, um, page 156, uh, those are just flush to the floor round tops. So flush to the floor is once the, whether it's tile, concrete, whatever the finish is, would finish flush with this. Um, and this is what you would see inside the floor. Um, pretty standard, probably the most common um, clean-out assembly. Uh, the R-C-1 is a round top, uh, basically the same layout as this, but it has a, a carpet marker on the top. So in the center of it, there's a tapped hole. And what the carpet marker is for is if they install this, you know, the clean out doesn't have to be in a drain area, so it could be in a carpeted room or anything like that. It's a little stainless steel, uh, real shallow cone dish 
that just marks where this is at. So if anyone needs to get to it, if there's carpet over it, they'll know where to go and where it's located. It's just kind of a um, uh, just you know way to be able to locate it without starting to you know tear carpet up and stuff. How do they unscrew that tack does it, if it's flush? Does it have pinholes or something to unscrew it when it's for the carpet marker? No, the actual. Oh, never mind. The access cover unscrews off. I was thinking. Yeah, the access cover. Yeah, you have three screws. Right. Okay. Take that off. Then the bottom of page 157 is the RF dash C or RF C uh, seven or nine dash three. Uh, that's a surface mount um, membrane clean out. So that's pretty much the same as what we were looking at with the, um, the FCs in the floor drains, except this has a clean out top. So if there's anything where they want either the flooring or there's some type of membrane that's on top of the flooring that's sealing it off, this is what you want to use because you have the clean out top, then you also have a ring that goes around um, the shank of it. So it's actually three pieces where these are normally just two. You have the shank here and then you have the top. So this one has three pieces and they'll remove the ring and the cover and they'll run their flooring or membrane or whatever we're doing in there and then they'll put the ring and that'll clamp the membrane creating a seal and then you clean out uh, cover and go on top and finish it. So it's just a different application depending on what type of flooring or the, um, you know, the insulation of the flooring is. And then you see on that one too, there's the C1440. Uh, we'll talk about the plugs um, when we get to uh, the other stuff. Uh, S-1, S-3 is on page 158. Those are just square tops rather than a, a round top. The TS1 and 3, uh, those are square, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. T-1-3 dash dash is a uh, tile recess round uh, cover. The TS is a square tile recess. So this is a TS-3 here. Um, you can see in the center, it has a slight recess. I think it was, yeah, roughly a hundred thousands. So if they're putting tile on it, uh, more like a stick tile, laminate tile, um, they could cut a section of that tile out and fill in that opening. So all you would see that in the floor is just that out rim of the stainless steel. Uh, it kind of blends more into the floor rather than the whole stainless steel block. Um, of course, the same way as all the other ones, it's just a personal preference for installation. Uh, the next one is the ones for the uh, terrazzo tile, um, that's a deeper tile, so that's the UR and the US. Um, this is the um, UR-1, so you can see how deep the recess is, uh, follows the same principles as the tile recessed one, um, if they're doing more of like a, uh, you know, a true tile floor. And they don't want, you know, big nickel brown, round, or um, stainless steel round showing. Uh, they'll fill this in with the tile that they're finishing the floor with. And then all you have is either that nickel bronze or stainless steel. Um, this has two screws. And then it also has, because it's so deep, it's got a, a hole here where they could put a screw in and pull it out. So kind of like an anchor and be able to remove it because um, it's kind of difficult. Uh, so what's, the, what's the recess on that one? This one, if you look here, I put them, they're roughly oh, uh, 11 16, 0.68. Okay. Um, which, by the time you put your, your uh, what's it called, you put tile on? Oh, the mortar. Or yeah, I'll just put that in a big cut piece of tile. Um, you can get it flush with the top. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention with like our R 1, R 3s, S 1, S 3s. It's not going to be very often that these are access. So you get the three screws to remove it, and all of them have a little notch in the lid. So you can get a flathead screwdriver in there and pry it open. 
Um, so once you get this flush, it's kind of difficult to get it out. You know, it's strainer is not a big deal because you got all the slots. You can put a screwdriver in, in one of the slots and get it open. But the clean outs, there's a little recess in the bottom. Um, so you can get a, a screwdriver in there and pry it open. Then you get to the XRs, uh, which starts on page 160, the bottom of page 160. Um, XR on the, that page, on page, top of page 161 is the XS. Those are just heavier duty um, top assemblies. So it just depends on the application or what they're, uh, you know, where they're going, what type of traffic is going to be traveling over them. Uh, clean out is really easy because you know, when you look at floor drains, you look at a square one, you got five, six, eight, ten. We we're only dealing with one size, so there's a lot less part, you know, model numbers and stuff like that for clean out. So, and they assemble just like a normal floor drain would, so it keeps it easy. The next one on page 161 at the bottom is the isolation floor uh, clean out. And I went through and I found some information on this. I just wanted to go through it so kind of everyone understands the principle of it. Um, and it also relates to our F1600 and 1620 series. Um, basically, the isolation floor system is a secondary floor that's on top of the structure that is designed to have slight movement. Um, there's a lot of um, kits they sell or components that are designed with so much pressure that the floor will be built on to allow certain movement. Um, so it's mostly used in uh, you know buildings where you're trying to minimize noise, uh, condo complexes, stuff like that. So you don't have a lot of uh, noise transfer from the floor above or the floor below um, onto your unit. And then some local codes, uh, depending on where they're at, will also require this type of drains and cleanouts because of uh, seismic issues if they're near a fault or it can be possible earthquake or anything like that. Uh, it really helps to dampen the movement within the building. Um, so that's the purpose. Uh, you see the picture there. Uh, it's probably the best illustration I could find. So you have your main structure on the bottom. Uh, and then you can see the, uh, the frame structure with those pillars located. You can see three of them across the front. And it um, that's almost like a spring in there, I guess or shock, easiest way to describe it. And then your upper floor is built on top of that. So all that moves um, when needed or if there's any movement. So if you have, you need a clean out along this long run, you can't have the floor moving in the clean out staying still. Uh, it could be a tripping hazard, you know, possible seal issues. Uh, so the C1200-C-R is designed for that you know, exact application. So if you look at the top, you have basically our normal uh, C1100, C1000 assembly. Uh, it does have a membrane clamp because the chances are you're going to want to seal off that upper floor. So there would be some type of membrane to seal off that floor so you know, stuff isn't running through your upper floor down to the structure. Uh, and then on the bottom, you have an A1 body with a uh, membrane clamp again, and then a W-31 coming out of that clamp. Um, so that would mount directly to your, your drain system. And in between the two, you have the, um, the neoprene expansion uh, compensator. So that will take up any movement that's happening between, you know, difference in movement between the structure and your finished floor. So as that floor raises and lowers, um, that rubber component will be able to absorb that movement. Uh, does that make sense? Okay. Like I said, that's the same setup as the F1600 and 1620 series for drains. You just replace your uh, your top assembly with rather than a clean out cover, you have the uh, floor drain, whatever size they want. Um, then we look at the uh, page 162 has all the different options for your uh, top assemblies for the C1200 or 
uh, yeah, top assemblies. So they could choose, you know, any of the ones we talked about or any ones because it's a standard A1 body on top. So whatever would fit their application better. Uh, page 163. Um, so these are typically used. You got the C1 or 1222s all the way through to C1228. Um, these use the A4 body. Uh, so these drays are, are clean outs are normally put in places where they don't need a flange um, like you have on the A1 body, whether it's for membrane. Um, other thing that's real popular with these, these are normally used in a prefab uh, floor with a core out hole. So they have a prefab or pre-poured concrete floor or whatever the material is. And they'll come through wherever they're going to locate drains or clean outs. They'll come through and drill a core hole. So with this one, you can see it's a lot smaller diameter than what the A1 body is. So they're able to drill a small hole, which makes it easier, saves time. Um, so that's one application for these, which is the same with the floor drains that we talked about before. Um, it has the same 4-inch NPSM thread as all of our uh, clean-out tops. So they could choose any style top they want to go on top of this. Um, these do not have the recessed area for the, uh, the O-rings. So what they come with is a secondary plug in them to create your secondary seal. Uh, standard comes with plastic. There's the option uh, dash 34B for the brass uh, closure plug. So if they want, don't want plastic, they can get a brass one. Uh, so that's your secondary um, seal. Um, Is there a gasket on that one? This is a taper. Okay. So they can put some sealing on it. It's a normal uh, square head, so you get a wrench in there, open it up. But yeah, it's a tapered thread plug, so you can put some sealing on it or you know something like that to create the seal. Then you look at the, so this is for your uh, C1222, 3, and 4. It uses the A4 body with whatever top they like, you know, normal uh, uh, top assemblies that we talked about. Then the C1226 and 28, it's basically the same design and setup as this. It's just on a larger scale. Um, it offers, it's for the 6 inch and 8 inch connections, uh, so it has the, it uses the C1220-PB uh, body, which is a larger diameter, and then you can see the top assemblies, the C1226 is an 8 and a quarter diameter, and the C1228 has a 9 and a quarter diameter. So it's just uh, the same setup, same principle, it's got a closure plug in it, um, the, the C1220 top assemblies, the STAs, thread on top of it, um, gives you the same setup, it's just a larger body and top. Uh, the C122030 series, these are, it's a top assembly that directly connects to the drain system without the need of a drain body. Um, so these have your connection right on the bottom of it. Um, and you can see the different sizes that are available and then the different, uh, different cover um, materials that you can have. Uh, any questions on that? So basically you're, you're connecting right to the pipe rather than using this body. Um, one plus is less components is going to be less money. The only downside is with these you have this threaded option to raise and lower it or you wouldn't have that. And if you need something, if there's membrane inside the flooring, you'd want the A1 body because that you can clamp your membrane create a leak point um, for that membrane. Um, the C1230-WF um, connects directly to the pipes just like the C1230. The WF is just for wood floor insulations. So this has a, uh, a flange that goes around the edge of your cover and it just has three or four holes where you could screw it right into a wood decking or flooring. Just another option. Uh, the C1300 is a um, excess covers. 
So these aren't a clean out cover, they're just an access cover. Um, the access covers, um, they're just installed inside the floor. Um, they can be used to access a clean out, a gas line, a water line. Um, if something has a gas line within the floor and they need a shut off valve, this is a good thing you have. You could open that up, turn the gas off, and stuff like that. Just allows it. It's almost like an access door for the floor. They have those in Florida in front of all the houses. That's how your water shut off. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah. And all our stuff is inside. It's so cold here. But, yeah. So, just to allows you to get access to the floor. This could be, say, a clean out gas line, water line, anything in the floor that we need access to. Um, the C and then the C thirteen hundred. That's just a regular serrated top, like our regular cleanouts are. Um, so that would be installed flush to the floor. The U R and U S. Those are uh, recessed for terrazzo tile. So just like this assembly was, it'd be similar to this. It's just um, you know just the cover design. The C thirteen ten has a serrated top. And what this does is it actually just fits over the pipe. Um, doesn't create a seal. So a lot of times you'll have to put a plug in it, um, something like that. Talking about the plugs. Um, going back to the A1 bodies, uh, A4 bodies, there's the C1440 plugs. So what these are, you have a rubber, outside rim and a plastic cone that goes inside. So as you tighten this down, the rubber expands. So if someone wants um, an additional plug to go into the A1 body, this will go right into your outlet depending what size. So it gets pushed into where the outlet is and they just tighten this up until the you know until it gets snug and tight and then you created a seal around that outside edge. Um, so you could really have three possible seals on a regular clean out. You get the one here, here, and then on the top assembly. What did you call that? What was the part number? For it's that a C1440. I think it's listed under the vertical ones. But I just wanted to show with uh, the body before we uh, get to the vertical stuff. I don't know if it. There's an option suffix for it. Yeah, dash 34, T cone plug and gasket. So all the C1100 series have that option. So it's just adding that to it. So with the C1310, the reason why I brought this up is it doesn't create a seal to the pipe. It just covers the end of the pipe. So a lot of times when they have this, um, they'll install one of these so you seal off that pipe or they can use something else. But this is the most common type of plug. Just goes right into the pipe, they'll tight, tighten it down. It's down under that cover so no one would see it. You'd have a nice finished uh, top there, but under it you'd have the plug. And that's the same thing with the C1300-MF on page 166. Uh, this unit just covers the pipe, so you'd have a pipe, you know, stopping an inch or two or whatever from the finished floor, and this wood sleeve go over it, and they pour their concrete, finish their floor. Um, so when they need to access the clean out, they would open up those bolts, and you would just have the pipe inside there. Um, inside that, that pipe then would probably have some type of plug like this or something else to seal off the drain system, otherwise you'd have an open port uh, to the drain system. Um, so then cleanouts for vertical pipes, uh, wall cleanouts, um, basically starts with the C1400. Those are uh, just access covers. Uh, so in a wall you could have access cover. Now behind this access cover could be a cleanout, could be a gas line, a water shut off, uh, anything like that. It just allows uh, them to install on the wall and have an access port to something. In inside the wall. 
Uh, and then the C1400 RD on page 167 is the same, um, same principle, just a different setup. If you look at the C1430 down below, that's the C1400 RD with the threaded um, plug. So, with this, back looking at the house, we were looking at your vertical line. You would have a T off right there. And they could put the a threaded one in this C1430 uh, plug. It's a bronze recessed head plug with thread in there and create your seal. So you have an access port. And then if you're putting drywall or any type of finishing wall in front of that, then you could put this chrome plated disc that would cover it. Um, it's found in our bathrooms. You can see it on the wall. Um, and all it does is create a nicer look rather than having a plug sticking through the wall. Um, C1440, that's the plug. Um, and then page 168, 169 is the same plug just with different options. Uh, the C1440-R comes with a round, um, a round wall access cover. Um, the dash RD is just the same as uh, what was shown on the, 14, the C1430. But it uses this plug rather than the brass plug. Um, and then the S is just a square wall access cover. Uh, C1450. Um, it's the same as basically what we were looking at with the, uh, the floor one, which is the C1230 series. Um, it connects directly to the, uh, the drain line with either a no hub or PVC socket connection. And then you can see the different types of um, uh, cover plates they have available. So C1450 would be where they would actually install that and that cover would be flush with your finished wall. So that's what you'd see. Um, and then the dash R, dash RD, dash S are just different cover plates, wall access covers or the uh, cover plate if they want to use those instead. Um, C1460 is the same brass plug on page 172 that is used back on the uh, C1430. But what it comes with, it actually comes with the T section of pipe. So if they don't add, you know, they just want to cut the pieces, they're installing it, put this in, that's where the clean out is, they're done. Uh, makes insulation a lot quicker and easier. So it's the regular plug like we had before, but it comes with the piece of pipe. And then the dash R, dash RD, and dash S is the same setup, just with different uh, wall access covers or the cover plate. Any questions with any of the vertical stuff? Does all make sense? But pretty much you got the same stuff just with different access covers. Do they ever have a need for the towel ones? If they do like a towel wall, can they use the one for towel floor on the wall? Or uh, they can use the, uh, the terrazzo cover. Yeah. yeah, you could use that on the wall if you want. Um, I don't, I, I couldn't even tell you if they've done it or not. But oh, yeah. Like bathrooms where they have sure. everything tiled. Yeah, so yeah, it, it definitely could be done there. Um, okay, so then the next one on page 174, uh, the C1470. Uh, we made this one mostly for the Chicago market because of all the hub and spigot requirements and connections. Uh, it's a vertical clean out. Uh, comes with the C1434, the brass plug on it. Uh, also has a half inch MPT access hex head plug in it. So if they need to add any pressure to the line to try and blow it out because there's a clog or anything, they can do that. And then on the inside, if you look at the cutout section, there's internal threads for a test plug. So if they ever have to test the line, um, they could thread a plug in there and it'll block off the line whether they're testing above this or below it. They're able to do that, so it's just another option. Uh, 
The test plug is additional. It doesn't come standard with the unit. The brass plug uh, is standard on the unit. The test plug, the same thing that you're holding up? No, it's a, it would be a threaded, like uh, the C1230, like the brass. Um, going back to page. Page uh, 167, see the C1430, it's a brass plug at the bottom that threads in there. It's a regular MPT connection. So Jason, you said the test plug doesn't come with it? The test plug, the internal test plug, see it says internal threads for test plug use, that doesn't come with it. The the C fourteen thirty four that's labeled there on the you know the cap off the opening yeah. on the side that comes with it, but inside it's a smaller plug. Um, the C fifteen hundred that's a deck clean out, so that would finish up to your finished top. Uh, they're all inside caulk connections, so the two three four six X uh, they're all inside caulk. Uh, to be able to remove the top, you need the H1042 T wrench tool. What that does is it has two little prongs that stick out the bottom. And they go into the two holes on the cap, and that cap unthreads out. Uh, there is a seal in the bottom of the cap, so it creates an airtight seal. Is it like something they could just use a spanner wrench on? It would uh, be a large spanner wrench. I think it's probably a good like two inches span. So. And then the uh, C1600, <laughs> basically it's just a floor drain and a clean out assembly with a P-trap, um, which is the same as what we saw before in our floor drains. Um, so you got your, your drain and your clean out with the P-trap, and like we are saying with, uh, you know, good rules of thumb for clean out locations, it's good to have one where a P-trap is, because um, it's access to it, so. That's an option there. Otherwise, that's it for clean outs. Um, <coughs> any questions or anything?